SIS Tutorial 2-1 and GIS Tutorial Workbook 3. In this tutorial, we're going to be building the geo database that we created the blueprints in in Tutorial 1-1. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is print out the forms that you made in Tutorial 1-1 or have the file open. Um, if you don't think yours are complete or you just didn't really want to do it, you can go to the Esri Press folder and it's already completed down at the bottom by Esri. It's in the tutorial 1-1 GDB design. And there's a slight difference. Um, they gave theirs a feature data set name. Uh, they didn't have us do that in tutorial 1-1. And what we're going to do next is open up our catalog where we will be doing a majority of our tutorial. Now, we're going to be working, and I don't know why it's showing up like that. There we go. Okay. Now you're going to want to navigate to your Azure Repress folder in your GIS T3 folder. You're going to right click on My Answers and you're going to create a file geo database. And we're going to name it Land Records. Now, I already went through and completed this one, um, so I'm going to take a few shortcuts. Now, I'm only going to do the, the fields that are absolutely necessary to get through this one. Um, at the end, I'll... But I would recommend that you do everything, because I'm not sure if you're going to be using this geo database in future exercises. So it's best to go through and do everything, as the, the tor tutorial tells you to. So right now our geo database is empty, so we're going to give it a new feature data set. And we're going to call it property data. One word. And we're going to give it a coordinate system. And this coordinate system they want us to use is Olender in Central North Texas. So you want to go to Project Coordinate Systems state planes, NAD 1983 US feet, and you just scroll down until you find Texas. And right here we have Texas North Central. Then you just hit next. And we don't have to worry about a, coordinate, a vertical coordinate system because we're not worried about 3D. And this we're going to keep as default. Now that we have our feature data set, we're going to add our two feature classes that we have, a polygon and a line. So we'll start off with the polygon first, call it parcels, and the alias is property ownership. We're going to keep this as default. And here is where we add our tables. And so you want to click on here and you want to add all these fields using the correct field type and giving it the alias and whether it should or should not have nulls. Now, the only ones I'm going to do for this exercise are street type use code, geo reference, and plat status. Just because the other ones uh, are too time consuming for the videos, but you should go through and add those because they might be used in future tutorials. So I'm going to go through and do these now. So we have street, 
underscore type and it's a text and make sure you have the underscore you can't have spaces up in the field name but you can have them down here and we're not allowing nulls so you just make sure that's a no And make sure this one is a short integer. And the only other one that is not a text is the zip code. So make sure you do that as well. And make sure that you allow nulls for suffix direction, suffix or prefix direction, and prefix type. Now with that done. Gonna click finish. And I've done this a few times and I've had a few errors pop up saying that I couldn't create the feature class for whatever reason or so. Um, but if I did it a second time, it would always work. So I'm not sure what the problem was. If you keep getting that error, even if you've tried it a second or a third time, shoot me a message and we'll work on it. But right now I'm not sure what it is, so I couldn't figure out a trick or, or anything. So now with those done, we're going to go in and we're going to do our other feature, which is going to be our lot boundary. Remember it's one word on top for the name and you can break it up into two for the alias. And this is a pol this is a line, so make sure it's not a polygon. Keep that default. And here, you just add line code. We keep it as a text. And you can have this open if you want. We're not allowing nulls, and the alias is just line code. And we just press finish, and we have our two features. Now what we're going to do is create our domains. So we know what our domains are for. Uh, so you might be tempted to try to do the domains through the feature class itself, but that's not how you do it. You right click on land records and you go to properties. And there's two tabs, a general and a domains. You wanna be in the domains. And we're going to do land parcel first, uh, or use code. So you wanna put parcel use code as the domain. And we're going to go to domains because that's where we have all our parcel codes. And in here, we're going to use the description we used. So use codes for parcels. It's a text, so we're going to change it to text. It's a coded values, which is the default and only option you can have for domain type. And then here is where we choose whether it's a1 single family detached. A2 mobile homes. Now you have to be careful going through this. Um, when I went through it, I did have a few errors that I caught. Uh, the biggest one I kept running into was keeping my finger on the shift button when I went to hit the numbers. 
So I would have a exclamation point instead of a1. So be on the lookout for stuff like that. And also try to get the, the spelling of these things as close as or correct as possible. Uh, so you, after you're done, just go through and read through. And after you do about five, you might want to hit apply. That will save your progress in case your computer crashes or arc Mac or arc catalog freezes and crashes. So once you do that, you're going to want to add all of these. I'm not going to just to save on time. And we're going to do the same thing for the other domains. Uh, so we have two more we're going to make. We're going to do parcel line codes next. And it works just like we did with the last one. Parcel line codes. And it's line codes for parcels. It is, again, a text. And we have row, right of way. We have lot, lot line. And we have split, split, lot line. And that one's all done. So we just hit apply and OK. Now the next one, as you can see, we don't have the codes written on here. We have a text file from the US Postal Service with all the abbreviations for their street types. And we can import that text file into a domain. And to do that, you can either use the search feature to look up the tool, which is called table to domain, or we can use the Arc toolbox, which I'm going to do because I believe you should know where tools are in the toolbox. Now, this tool is in the data management tools in the domains toolbox, and it's right on the bottom. And up at top, we're going to, for the input table, we're going to go to our GIS tutorial data folder and make sure you choose the suffix text file not the Excel file and here is where we choose what field will be the code field so which one will fill in this column and we only have two fields in ours we have suffix type and suffix abbreviation now we want the abbreviation in this column so we would choose abbreviation and description would be type because that would be the spelt out instead of RD it would be roads so then we choose our land records geo database as our input workspace and this is where we change the name of our domain Then you just click OK, and the tool will run itself. If you get an error, just try doing it again. Um, I've done this a few times. I only had an error once. I did it again, and it worked. And this time, it worked flawlessly. So let's close there. Now we're going to open up our properties. We're going to go domains. And if you hit on here, you can see all the codes are now the abbreviations and that the descriptions are the types. So that just saved you a whole lot of work of having to write all that out. Now we're going to assign the domains. So we're going to just get out of there. And to do that, we have to go to the actual class features, or feature class. So you want to go to parcels and go to properties. 
and we're going to be working in the fields tab. And uh, as you can see, they added two new fields, uh, field length and field area. So uh, they do that automatically, so don't even worry about them. Now, we have, we're going to go back to our table. And we have two domains inside pars uh, parcels, street type and land use code. So if we click on street type, domain has now become available because we added domains to our geo database. So we're going to click on that and we're going to, we can choose from any one of our domains. So for street type, we want street type abbreviation. Then we're going to click on use code and we're going to use use parcel use code. Uh, be careful because these two look very similar. Then you just click apply and okay. We're going to do the same thing with lot boundaries. Now those domains are connected. Now what we're going to do is set up our subtypes. And we're going to go into properties for parcels. And there's a tab for uh, subtypes. And we're going to click on that. And if you had done like you were supposed to and go in and put all of these fields in, you will have two options here. You will have plat status and zip code. The reason being, those are the only ones with numbers um, that aren't text. So that's because it uses a coded system that uses numbers. So we're going to use plat status. And we're going to use our subtype tab to input our subtypes. So we have one for platted property, two for unplatted property, and three for that pending. And as soon as you're done, you just hit apply and okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define the relationship class. As you remember, we filled out this little form at the back. So to start this, what we're going to do is we're going to have to import the table that we discussed here, this tax record 2010. To do that, you right click on land records and you go to import and table single. You go up to our data and it's right here. It's a DBF file. We're just going to add that. And we have to come up with a name for it. It automatically saves it to our land records geo database because we right clicked on that. We didn't use a tool. If we had used it, add a uh, table to geo database, you'd have to browse to it, but we skipped that step. So for the output table, we're just going to call it tax records 2010. And then we just click OK. And once again, if you get an error, just try it again. Uh, sometimes the program just hiccups and for whatever reason, it'll fail. Now, with that done, we're going to right click on land records again, go to new. We're going to do a relationship class. And we're pretty much just going to follow this and input all this information into here. Uh, this is a very helpful uh, Geo database design file that they gave us for the domains and everything. So I would recommend keeping a blank copy of this on your computer. So our relationship class is called ownership. And our origin is parcels. Now it'll highlight blue, but once I choose down here, it'll just turn to a light gray. It's still highlighted, so don't worry about it. Then you just click on tax records 2010 then click on next. We have simple peer to peer 
So we click on next again. And here for origin, we want parcels is owned by, and here we want owner as ownership of, and then we want none for messages. Now I really like this uh, portion of this this tool because it shows a little image for each one of these. For right now, one to one, each parcel parcel is assigned to one individual, whereas one to many is one parcel is assigned to many individuals, and this many to many which we're using has an, one individual owning multiple parcels or one parcel owned by multiple people. So make sure M to N is selected. And here for attributes we want yes. And this is where we add the fields that we want. And the fields that they want us to name this is percent own. And it's going to be a float. And we're going to allow null. So once that's done, you just click yes. And this is our parcels shape uh, feature class. And as you remember, we have a geo reference field. Our table also has a geo reference field. So those are how they're going to relate to each other. Now, the book can be a little confusing here because in the book, it says to put property for the origin table and owner for the destination table. However, in here, it shows origin table should be owner and destination should be property. So I'm going to go by what this says. Oops, that should be geo. And it gives you a brief summary of what your relationship class looks like, and then you just hit finish. The tool has done its work, and now we have our relationship class. Now we are done with our catalog, and what we're going to do is we're going to test our subtypes. So we're just going to X out of here, and we're going to open up ArcMap. And they want us to open up, what's that? that? And they want us to open up tutorial map 2 1. When you do that, you just get a blank map. So uh, if nothing comes up, you didn't do anything wrong, that's just the way it's supposed to look. Now we're going to add. RGO our data set. Now mine's not complete, so I'm going to go and do the one that I did earlier with all the records and everything input. So I'm just going to add data, property data, and this adds all the feature classes inside that um, data set. And as you can see, because we had subtypes, it automatically put property ownership into categories as a symbology. Now, what we're going to do is obviously we don't have any features because these are blank ones. So we're going to create a few. 
So if you don't have your editor toolbar, you can go up to customize toolbars and check it right there. So you want to go to start editing. Now, if the little box doesn't pop up automatically, you just check this cre create features and they want you to choose plated property. And we're going to create some polygons. So there's one. There's two. There's three. And if you create one that you don't want, why it's highlighted, just hit the delete button and it'll go away. Now, none of them are highlighted and they want us to hit the attributes button. Now, nothing is shown because nothing is selected. So use your edit tool and if you click on it, it'll show you the attributes for the one that's selected. Right now, the only difference is the object ID. And this was one because it was the first, second, and third one drawn. And as you can see, it automatically filled their plat status as platted property. That's because I chose them in the create uh, feature window. So it already filled in that attribute. Now, this is where the domains can save you a lot of time. Rather than have to go into the attribute table and type in all these codes and everything, I can come down here to where it says street type, and I can just choose from a drop menu. And I can do the same thing from land use code. And that's where it saves you a lot of time in the long run. It's kind of time consuming when you first do it, but once it's done, it can save you so much more time. And that's it for this tutorial. Now close ArcMap without saving your edits or your map document.